If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Pump. Do, 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 do. Boom. Yeah. For the first 46 minutes, we do our current events intro talk. We talk about co ed baby showers. Should we keep them <laughs> or get rid of them? Men, rise up. Stop making us go to these things. Rise up against them. We talk about my father daughter dance this weekend. Oh, so, melted so my heart. Sweet. Oh, melted my, my heart. God. We t- uh, I tell the boys about it. A very uh, interesting documentary I saw on Netflix. Highly recommend it. It's called Revolution. The next sexual revolution. Ooh. Then we talk about disciplining children, those bad kids. Should you beat your kids? <laughs> we talk yeah. about the medication of children. It's funny how that follows it, right? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Kid sexual acting Sexual revolution, kids. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, we mentioned Brain FM. Uh, Brain FM, actually, uh, I think right now they're investigating whether or not their focus you know, sounds or music mm-hmm. can help kids with ADD or ADHD. Uh, if you go to Pretty brain exciting stuff, very exciting. If you go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump, you'll get a discount on a membership. I mentioned the thrive market bone broth. Now thrive market sells non GMO organic products. Uh, we are sponsored by them. If you go to thrivemarket.com forward slash mind pump, here is what you will get one month free membership, $20 off your first three orders of $49 or more and free shipping. I also mentioned the Organifi green juice. We love Organifi organic supplements. They have great protein powders as well. And then we are also uh, sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you'll get a big discount on their products. Uh, Then I get into the questions. The first question was, are we worried people will use too much intensity with MAPS Hit our new program. Yes, we got a new program coming out. We talk a little bit about it in this episode. It has a warning coming out. It's out. It's out right now. In fact, get some if you want your free shirt. In fact, uh, 6 p.m. Tuesday live YouTube video where we go over the new program. So if you're listening to this before or after, you can go to YouTube because it will be recorded on our channel, Mind Pump TV. Next question was, how do our significant others respond to the amount of time we invest on social media? Mm, my Do, wife hits my phone out of my hand. And and you deserve, and she, and well deserved. Yeah. Next question was, there was a recent news article in California about petitioning to ban tackle footballs, uh, tackle football for kids under the age of high school age. Now, are we going to just cover our kids in uh, bubble wrap? Yeah. More walk big brother day? bullshit. Who knows? Uh, find out in this episode. We also answer the question about what we think about the FDA regulating Kratom. Kratom is this plant found in Southeast Asia. A lot of people are using it for pain relief. Uh, it's got analgesic, analgesic properties. There are some euphoric, fun properties. Maybe it's a little addictive. Is the FDA going too far? Probably. What are analgesic? Analgesic. It's analgesic. A, it's a suppository. It's a, yeah, yeah. It's for your anal area. <laughs> Shut it in uh, also, um, when you're listening to this episode, you can go on our page, mindpumpmedia.com. We have launched our new MAPS program. It's MAPS HIT, High Intensity Interval Training. This is the single best fat burning in a short period of time program we offer if you want to lose body fat very quickly. It's a six-week program. It's programmed excellently. This is also great for people that are crunched for time. All the workouts are between 15 and 25 minutes long. That's right. It's very intense but very short. Now, if you use the code HIT Launch H I I T. L A U N C H, you will get twenty dollars off and a free T shirt, and that lasts until Saturday. And it's T shirt time. T shirt time. Speaking of T shirts, so we had fifteen reviews, and we're giving out four shirts. Mm, that's low, and not too bad. We haven't asked for it. So the winners are Grace Liz Jacobs, Benny Martinez, NGO Sloths, Crushing It Babe. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. You finish off my Saratoga there or what? I know you, the sparkling water thief. Saratoga? That's all gone. It's your elite mineral water. I'm drinking Mexican water. You know what? Can I say something real quick about Mexican water? I love Topo Chico. What's that? Uh, We were talking about like marketing you know, strategies and stuff like that. <clears throat> mm. We talked about Brussels sprouts, how that used to be 
what if you may if you had to represent if a food had to represent all things disgusting it was Brussels oh, sprouts. Oh yeah, when we yeah. Kids, right? that was the reference. You'd right. be like Brussels sprouts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's gross. It's like Brussels sprouts. Now all of a sudden it's everywhere, right? Oh, the yeah. second most popular, in my opinion, or most excuse me, most successful marketing campaign I've ever seen in my life is fucking Topo Chico Mexican water. Yeah. Because when when I was growing up, Mexican water. If you drink Mexican water, it, that that just means insta dysentery. I don't know if it's a great great marketing or not. I haven't until we went to Austin. I'd never even seen that before. I bought this in Whole Foods. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know about it. It's not. I haven't seen it everywhere. It's not like the fact that we're it's selling. Not, it's not I think it's on. emerging in its popularity. The fact that we're well, selling Coke water from Mexico yeah. is is crazy. No, I, I see what you're saying. It is, is it technically from Mexico? It's made. It's bottled, and the spring is in Mexico. It's oh, the Mexican spr- water. The, the spring <laughs> is actually in Mexico. Yeah, someone to read the background. Yeah, read it because I don't know if I believe it. Um. It's like they yeah, that is store. wow. Made, what what a what a monstrous made hill they ever in Mexico. Claimed. What yeah. Are, yeah. What are the what you know what though when you can say something like that like made somewhere, like bottled at the source, which is in Monterrey. Oh, Monterrey. So it does say that. Yep. Wow. 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 Mexican water, dude. I'm telling you, when I was growing up, either that or they just really got over on you though. What? <laughs> that it's really that good. You don't say it. It's or the, Chico. It yeah. is. No, I, we've all been on the kick it's, for a minute. It's got a level of. Uh, of uh, bubbliness to it. I don't know if that's a, that's a technical term. <laughs> it's the perfect, yeah, blend. I don't know, whatever that is as far as like how much carbonation they put in it. It's just like perfect. Dude, I'm going to say something that's going to offend all my uh, Italian people, but I may <laughs> like it better than San Pellegrino. Oh um, my God. Blasphemy. Yeah. I love Sal and Pellegrino, yeah. so I haven't. I'm, it's not definitive. I'm on yet. this Saratoga kick over here. I really like this. This is from New York, I think. Mm. Of course, you're gonna get some bougie water. It's all blue, like a blue <laughs> yes. bottle. That's probably like ten dollar bottle bougie. right there. Yeah. Is that what it is? Uh, it reminds uh, me of Voss. Like if you like, what an asshole you'd be if you, like, all you drink was Voss. Like, no, excuse me. You know, you're just like cracking it open. The stupid bottle. I with think the big it's. Cra- cap. I think it's crazy that when we were kids, that market didn't even exist. Well, bottled yeah. water. How crazy is that? I know. How crazy. Now, name a place. Like name a ridiculous a, idea. Name a place of business. Name a place somebody's home. Name somewhere you've been, and there's not a bottle of water. So at least one yeah, bottle no, of water. Everywhere. That's how fucking crazy that it, that it, and it, that market did not exist. Not at all. Fifteen years ago. Not we, at all. we all just drank out of the hose. The hundred you know percent. I mean? Like that was fine. Right. Every day. Yeah. Every day. Law. Faucet or hose. Yeah. Actually, my parents bought a water purifier when I was. Probably twelve, but that's because my mom's brother, my uncle, is a health and wellness like fanatic. He's the guy that has the he's a Chinese herbalist, oh, yeah. you know, like uh-huh. uh, certification, whatever you want to call it. And so he was the one that talked my parents into getting reverse osmosis water filters back when that shit was not popular, expensive. It was really expensive. So we were one of the first ones to have uh, reverse osmosis. I find it fascinating that we we pay that much money for water that we didn't before. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a lot of little things like that. that you know it, why I do it now? It's crazy. I do it now because they they because of they put fluoride and stuff in water. Now, in San Jose, I think it doesn't have fluoride yet, but I know they're going to start adding fluoride. In San Jose, it tastes like fucking pennies. It just tastes horrible. If you drink out of the tab, it tastes like you're sucking on pennies, dude. <laughs> it's disgusting. I, remember, I was at somebody's house who didn't have bottled water, and I tried it for a second. I'm like, you don't have bottled water? Okay, so I, how's your sink water? Oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And I drink it, and I was like... Tastes like goddamn pennies, dude. <laughs> <laughs> pennies. <laughs> it does. That makes me wonder, like, how many times have you sucked on a penny? Uh. <laughs> oh, you, come on. You mean to tell me you didn't suck on pennies when you were a kid? No. <laughs> Every kid put a penny in his mouth at one no point. No wonder you have money I issues. I swallowed pennies <laughs> and then <laughs> found them in my shit. This kid was Here eating money. That? No wonder, Justin. Yeah. He was like, mm, yum, yeah. I mean, I did that. Now he's got I a tried a silver dollar. <laughs> that was as far as I could go. Yeah, I, I only sucked on paper money, bro. I'm not cheap. So uh, another thing that did, <laughs> you know, another thing that did not exist uh, 15 years ago that exists now that all over the place are these co-ed fucking baby showers. Oh, Stop God. it! I you was, went? Yes, oh. I did, dude. It was my best friend. Like I'm fucking. I this mean, is fucking. There's rules. Your of, best like, friend is fired. Like if it was just a friend, I'm not going, dude. Not going to your to your I co-ed didn't invite show. any of my friends. This, I, is, this is like I didn't my even go. Can like, I make a general childhood best friend? Can I make a general sweeping uh, statement? What's that? that? Can I have permission to do that? Okay, all right. Guaranteed. This is my opinion, but I will put money on it. Guaranteed. Nine out of ten guys 
who have a co-ed baby shower do it because their fucking fiance or girlfriend. Oh, or my wife. boy was the same way. He's like, I don't even uh, know. Duh. Yeah, There's yeah. a bar. Why are there, we letting so this happen, men? Like, yeah. what is wrong with us? That's exactly what's, what's going down. We're like, letting it happen. Put your foot down. This yeah. is a fucking boring Dude, ass party. Okay, that so girls this is not did. for us. We now no. have co-ed baby shower. We now have gender reveal party, and we now have engagement party in addition to the wedding. Cool. Yeah. I'm like looking at my boy. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like and the reveal, I'm like three right? grand deep into Ooh. you, bro. <laughs> we have a reveal <laughs> party now. On, like, it's a boy. Oh, cool. You could have just texted me. It's that. funny because I told guys- Katrina we can't afford any kids because we got to go to all these goddamn parties for our three friends that have had. had you know what's funny? Kid and Mary. They're I'm just try- trying to get more gifts. I- I'm trying to think of something right now. What is a is a traditional male thing that we do that we don't have our girls? Or girlfriends come to bachelor party. It's a uh, bachelor poker party, night. poker night. What else? Uh, like fishing trip. Yeah, right. Yeah, anything outdoors. Now, you don't see us making a big deal about bringing our girls because no. it's fucking. Fun you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Well, not only that, but we enjoy just our male I company. Think, I think. It's, I think women don't like each other I, so much. No, you don't have I think it's <laughs> they a, need to like diffuse. I it think a it's bit. a brilliant strategy by uh, women, like you, like you earlier alluded to, which is to get more gifts. That's what it is. It's like you Do they double get more you, gifts. Oh, this this crate. Check this out. Now, mind you, uh, my buddy married a Filipino girl, so there was like, and there was over a hundred people. Oh, at this so the big, whole family's a hundred people. I mean, there were baby, booze. We yeah, had two. Okay, three trucks, my Denali included, plus two other. Full beds of Chevys filled the gifts. Wow. Three trucks, bro. Wow. Worth of gifts. Yeah, that's that's loot. Yes. Yeah, you she raced it in. She what they were they were at uh Amazon. They were uh registered at Amazon, at Target, at Nordstrom's, and I think Best Buy, like four things. My They're, lord. And there must have been a hundred options for me to purchase. You know, I bought three gifts. But then you had to do all the stupid games, didn't you? I saw the video you posted of you sucking on a fucking baby bottle. Yeah, that was the, <laughs> that was the only game that I was involved in. So this is so this is the the only way <laughs> the only way I that we're going to that, gonna, video. I that, check that, out. that we're going to prevent this from happening. The only way is if men collectively refuse to play the stupid games. Just fine. You go because you got to have your you don't want to break up with your girlfriend or whatever. You go, but then refuse to play the games, and then you they say will never that's so kids. dominant. But you strike me as the man that if if fucking Jessica uh, said no. we're having, yeah, bro, he talks all a mad game, but you're I'm the guy bro, who would do that. I, like if my girl put some shit out, I'd be like, nah, I, I ain't going. You're doing your thing. You are not that I guy. Know. I didn't post. I don't. <laughs> I, don't say, I don't have any videos stuck in on a baby bottle. Adam. Oh, that was hey, <laughs> oh, that was no. me calling myself out on that. But you uh, better believe it uh, is. You are less likely to be the guy this to put his foot down right if now. your girl. Yeah, if your girl says it's going. Actually, no, I'm lucky because. Uh, with now, of course, there's close people that we both know and all that stuff. But she's just as likely to not want to go to one of those as I am. So I kind of uh, luck yeah. out on that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, she's she's not into baby showers. No, thank God, dude. She doesn't like ba- she doesn't like all those baby shower party type uh, things. And she also that's lucky doesn't like to dance at like weddings and stuff. So it's like I won the lottery, dude. Oh, for wow. me, yeah. Because so oh, so I'm a dancer at, at weddings. Oh fuck that! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I get down. Yeah, I, yeah, you do. You got some moves on to. it. I've seen you move. What uh, else are you gonna do there? It's fucking boring. Right. Drink, get, get drunk and yeah. dance. Right, drink, that's, that's, walk out, walk outside, go for a walk outside. Uh, talk about how stupid the wedding is. I. <laughs> that's uh, true. You could do that. That's me. You kept all angry. cynical. In yeah, the, in the corner. Oh, well, marriage. That, what the hell? Yeah, yeah. Stupid idea. I had one of those. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just pissing right. everybody. Off. They are a bit of a hustle. Dude, when you think yeah. about it, man. So, uh, so totally. I, so this weekend I had the father daughter dance with my little girl. Oh, that's right. Oh yeah, dude. I saw pictures that look. That looks great, oh, man. Oh, dude, it's her favorite time of the year, bro. She gets so fucking excited to do this. And this was a masquerade ball thing. So we had the little masks, and I showed up. And do I they theme it different every year? They do. Oh, wow. So I brought her a corsage, and you know we did the whole deal. And we get there, and so I didn't go last year because I missed last year. Remember, I had to That's make right. up for it with the we Disneyland the trip. Disneyland thing. But I went the previous year and the previous year after that. And at these father-daughter dances, my daughter, as soon as we walk in, she sees her friends, and they go nuts, and they run off. And then me and the dads kind of chill and watch them. And every once in a while, a slow song will come on. We'll go dance with them. Mm -hmm. This father-daughter dance was different. My daughter only wanted to dance and hang out with me. That's it. Wow. What's that like being a dad? That must feel good. Uh, It felt good, but it was almost like, I don't know. It made me emotional. Like, you don't want to go dance with your friends? No, I want to dance with you. yeah, yeah. And so she's just clinging on. We you. danced all night together. We invented new dances together, made a handshake together, did all these fun oh, things. That's rad. And yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, but it was really it was really cute. And then I'm watching all these other dads who are with their daughters, and you see because it goes up to eighth grade, the school, right? So you see twelve and thirteen year old girls. Which when I was a thirteen year old kid, I, 
for the most part, 13 year olds don't want to dance with their parents. You're right. They don't want to do that. Yeah. But this you get, like embarrassed. You do, right? Yeah. But this school and the community around it, and it is a Catholic school, and then they have this dance regularly. So I think these girls are, have been going to these dances with their dads. I'm watching these 13 year olds just dance with their dads, hug their dads, have a great thing with their friends next to them and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is fucking great. Now, yeah, do you think that's idea. do you think that's a uh, do you attribute that to it being a private school? Like uh, just just the simple fact that. You're probably right. I, I don't know. I'm completely speculating because I don't have children, and so I don't know what it's like to be at a dance with eight, eighth graders. But I remember being in eighth grade, and I most certainly would have not have wanted my mom chaperoning or anywhere near it. Right. So do you think that's because the the kids have different types of morals where because they go there? Or do you I, think the structure? If, I had, to, or what if do you I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would say, first off, they do these. So they do them. So public schools don't do them for the most part. In fact... I read an article that said in New York, I believe, they banned uh, father-daughter dances because of some you know, shitty politician, stupid, yeah, <laughs> social justice warrior Fuck bullshit off. about you know some girls don't have dads or it's you know it's because it's a, a you know the father can be the it's mother. It's not inclusive. Yeah, it was so stupid, so dumb. It's like the total the, the yeah, cut yeah. your nose off to spite your face type of thing. But uh, so I think they do the dances. So that's number one. So these kids probably have been going to them for years with their dad. Mm. The second thing is it is a Catholic school and say what you will about, you know, religion. There's good and bad. But one of the things that I've recognized that I've always recognized with with organized religion is they have a very tight community. So everybody, you know, and and they kind of have shared morals. At least they try to. Right. And Mm. family seems to be. One now, of those so take walk me through this because I'm really interested in this, especially being a guy who isn't like uh, doesn't profess to be Christian or Catholic or anything like that. You don't adopt any religion. So when you get in situations where you have all you know, father daughter dance and you're around all these other dads, does is it is like church talk a normal talk or are they normal? No. A lot of them are normal. No, guys it's that, normal stuff. So yeah. you're not. It's not all this. You know. You know. Talking no. about the Bible. Do you, and things no. like do you that. got? Do you like? Um, take them to dinner beforehand or like is that all part of it or you do that afterwards usually or? usually they do I didn't this last time but usually you do do that you'll, you'll take your daughter you know almost like a date yeah and I you know part of me is like should I fucking get a limo and really it, you know what to me hard, I but, think it's so uh, it's so smart that they do this because um, and I, I think you said this two years ago two or three years ago when you're talking about the way you just over the top, you get dressed up in a suit and you get down on your knee and you put the corsage on her and you take her to dinner and you do all this night. I mean, how smart is that as a father? Because it really sets up her expectations for a man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know, and it gives a good example. Right. right. You, you otherwise, are. otherwise dad could become like the parent all the time, right? You're just yeah. the dad who said, who drops the hammer when mom can't get through to you or yeah. like that. And you're always like this, you know, authoritative, authoritative posi- yeah. yeah, right. Position in the family. But then uh, to integrate something like this, where, you know, the daughter gets to see this side of dad where he takes you on a date and dances with you That's and important. creates dances and a handshake with you. Like, I mean, I just think that that is so powerful for what you're teaching her at a young age of what she should expect another man who takes her out. Like, it is. It is. You are, as a father, you are the example of what a man is to your kids, to both male and female but mm-hmm. to a female because she's most likely going to you know probably want to date guys or whatever at some point you are the example of what that is and it's not just how you treat her it's how you treat her mom how you treat people around you and it's funny because you're right this 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 dance is a great time to really put that in in, in practice but it's only one time a year right and something that i've been you know reading about more recently is If you think about, you know, every morning when you wake up your kids and you get them breakfast and you get them ready for school, that whole process might take, you know, maybe 30 minutes, right? But it's 30 minutes, five days a week. And if you do the math, you're spending years, you know, throughout your kid's lifetime, years of just that morning routine. So it's more important than the dance is what you do every day, the small stuff. You know, they say the small stuff matters. It literally does because it's stuff you do every single day. So it's like, how you are on a regular basis that you become that example. And so I know that if I'm the kind of example to my, and we're, because we're talking about my daughter to my daughter of, you know, um, he's caring, loving, but firm. He's got integrity. So he says what he means. He means what he says. He's, uh, not violent. He doesn't, uh, you know, uh, push dominance through his, you know, intimidation, uh, but at the same time, he can be very protective or whatever. Like these are things that I w- I would want in a man that she would date, 
And rather than telling her this is what you should look for, you show her. You just kind of show her, and you know, and that's her example. So then, when she dates a guy, if a guy acts like a fucking douchebag, you know what I mean? Or if a guy, you know, like because we know how guys, you know, guys are, especially when they're teenagers, they 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 are horny, you know. <laughs> For Idiots. the most, not yeah. all of them, but a lot of them are well. horny, and they want to have sex, and they might want to push it a little bit. And if a young girl um, feels confident in herself, and she's seen the example of her father, and she's not ready to do these things with a boy, then she's going to feel okay rejecting him because mm-hmm. she has that confidence. Whether now, if she didn't have that confidence, if she didn't have that role model, then she may feel like rejecting this boy is going to be devastating to her because now she's not getting that approval. So she's going to do things maybe she won't, she doesn't want to. Dude, I, I tripped. How far have you gotten beyond? Uh, have you got into the parenting part with uh, Jordan? Yep. Jordan, Doctor, yeah, uh, the um, 12 rules. Yeah. I, I have. Oh, dude, there's some really good stuff in there. It's, it, he, he dives into the how important those formative years are between like three to seven years old with, with kids and how much of our relationship as a parent with them really imprints them for the rest of their life and sets them up for it. it's 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 what's what i'm really enjoying about his book is it, it, it's confirming a lot of what i kind of felt but didn't have necessarily the words to put to mm-hmm. but really you know what separates humans from animals is our ability to our cognitive ability our, our our consciousness our ability to think things out and this kind of moral code that we develop that we learn um, is what is imperatively important. And, and if for people who say, no, it's not that it's innate, that humans naturally will don't need to be taught these things or learn these things. Um, uh, your evidence is the 20th century. Like look at the 20th century, look at the horrible things humans did when their moral code was flipped. So like when your moral code became communism, where, communism was the abolishment of all everything it's all about we're all equal we're all the same um and we're gonna you know push forward this ideal at by any means necessary you have millions and millions of people being killed when you have the ideal of nazism or when you have you know when your morality is when you change this rule base that you follow humans are capable of terrible fucking things Mm -hmm. and so it's important that we understand that the things that we have as morals aren't just arbitrary bullshit they actually serve a purpose. It's funny. I watched a documentary uh, this this weekend that I highly recommend everybody watch. It's on Netflix. I recommend you guys watch it. It's called Revolution, the Next Sexual Sexual Revolution. And in it, they're showing these spring break kids who are going to like Mexico and mm-hmm. you know Panama Beach, and they're fucking going nuts and they're drinking and having all this uh, you know uh, just free sex or whatever. And they were interviewing the kids and following them around. And as an adult watching it, I can clearly, and I guarantee you guys will do the same thing when you're watching it, I can clearly see that these kids are doing what they think they're supposed to be doing, not because it's making them happy. Like the dudes are like, oh yeah, I bang hella chicks, that's the goal, I don't even care. And they're like, what's her name? He's like, I don't know her name. And they laugh and the guys are like, yeah, that's cool. And they're like trying to sleep with as many girls as possible. But really, as a guy watching that, I can completely recognize and realize and identify that they're doing this entirely to show off to their buddies. It's oh, entirely yeah. to be the masculine whatever because they don't really want to. They don't really want to have sex with a bunch of random girls. They don't really like all of them. You know, Maybe there's one or something that they're really attracted to, but the rest of them are just to show off to your friends. And then they were showing the girls, and the girls were saying the same thing, and then they were they – were, uh, and the girls really are doing it because they want to be – they want that approval. They were showing this bikini contest where girls were on stage dancing, and then they're getting coerced to show their boobs – while they're on stage. And afterwards, when they interview the girls, they're like, well, you know, it kind of felt empowering because I wanted to do it. But then the crowd was telling me to do it. And and then, you know, I kind of didn't want to do it, but I felt like I had to. And you can tell it's like, these kids there aren't happy. There were reserves there, right, but right. they well, just like overrided it because they thought that's what they had to do. The kids are not happy. And then they're interviewing these psychologists afterwards. And they're saying, there's this one female psychologist who was fucking brilliant. And she says, you know, this mentality of, uh, meaningless sex of just physical pleasure of just banging a bunch of people requires zero connection mm-hmm. because when you make a connection you can't it but can't you have be meaningless to disconnect like immediately as you go into and it. so what's happening is that because you have to disconnect in order to do this they're going into it forcing that disconnection mm-hmm. where I don't care whatever it's just the body and the crazy thing about that is when you view someone else that you're sleeping with 
as just the body for pleasure and it doesn't then it's meaningless there's no connection you're simultaneously making yourself that as well because you're the other other side yeah, of that equation yeah, exactly and they're talking about how like there's a lot of depression and stuff around this this type because of mentality. it's not meaningful anymore. It's right. You, you, you've extracted all meaning out of it. So I'm watching this with all these kids and I'm like, fucking hey, like they're interviewing the, and the kids are acting like they're fun. They're getting, and the funny thing is. <clears throat> How old? What's the age group here? They're all uh, college students. Okay. So like 21, 22, 23. Where did you watch this on? What was Netflix. It? Netflix. Oh, it sounds, it's yeah, on it Netflix. Sounds Documentary? Bro, yeah. And I swear to God, it's, it's you remember kind the name of, of it? Yeah, it's called Revolution, the New Sexual. Let me double check. Um, I always thought the next about sexual that revolution. because of all those like girls gone wild and all these things that like you know exist forever now, right? Like they got this is a, this is a moment in time where kids are just being kids and trying to figure it out and all this, and then some assholes filming all this process, which you know lives forever. And then you know, of course somebody you know within that time period that was on that video is going to look back. What do you think they're going to think well, about well, themselves? Well, think about it this way too. Think of the environment that you almost have to create in order to progress with the meaningless disconnected sex think of the things essential to that because it never happens or at least it almost never happens when you're just out in public you're at the store and you see someone hey let's go have sex pretty rare usually you have to have be in an environment where there's a lot of alcohol or drugs so you literally have to take yourself out of yourself it's loud music it's a it's fucking lights it's dark <laughs> hmm. because you know what happens at the club when they turn the fucking lights bright yeah. all of a sudden Everybody's like, Ugh. yeah now you know, <laughs> so you almost have to Ugh. get you almost have to not to be invisible to yourself you have to not you have to disconnect from everything to do yeah, this thing all inhibitions to do this thing that you think you're supposed to do or this is what i'm supposed to do this is what makes me cool and then you end up becoming unhappy because meaningless anything disconnected anything meaningless anything is is it not, bounces is, right back on it's you. kind of sad right yeah. it's not and it's not no judgment of course i mean i think i look if i was a kid and i was at a club and i met a girl and i felt like right away just like holy shit i'm attracted to this woman i fall for her mm -hmm. and then we have sex that's different i bet you that's rare the other, I bet you most the of the time that doesn't happen. The other argument to that, though, to you know, just play devil's advocate, is part of that is part of the process of finding who you are and what you like and what you want. You want too could be because then you it have could the, be one of those pendulum things. It right? is, and then because the, then there's the other. You have to look at the other extreme of that, right? Which so, so with the household yeah, like that maturity. I grew up, that I grew up in, which was I signed a purity card, I wasn't going to have sex, and so super restricted, right? Super so, restricted. So yeah. then I hit my twenties, and then I start having sex, and then I go bananas because it's mm -hmm. like. I'm not sure what I want and I'm sleeping with all kinds of different girls that are all different that are all different and all along that process I'm kind of figuring out who I am yeah. and it's less about like this uh, am I connecting or not connecting I'm trying to figure that all out because so, I was so deprived of this type of interaction and relationship growing up you know what it reminds or it was me of? demonized it, right? exactly that's what it yeah. reminds me of. it reminds right. me of uh, like drugs where okay here's a good example alcohol let's use al alcohol example Alcohol is, you're far more likely to binge drink alcohol in America as a kid coming of age than you are in Europe. European kids don't binge drink and get sick and go to the hospital. Because they're exposed to it constantly. Because it's not. It's not a big deal. It's not yeah. demonized. Right, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think, I don't think sex should be demonized because I think that's that that's a different type of dysfunction. But what we've done is we've taken the pendulum and swung it in the opposite direction where we're like, it's not a big deal. It means nothing. That's what you're supposed to do. You should do it. You're a guy. You're a young guy. All you want to do is have sex. That's right. how you're going to show your manliness. If you don't, you're not a man. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but as a young, as a kid, if a girl wanted to have sex with you, didn't you feel like if I said no that I'm not a man? You know what I'm saying? Like I well, can't say no. Well, I didn't because I grew up differently, right? So well, you I, use that. So yeah, for me, there was a lot of pride in in saying no and being a guy, knowing that all the other guys were feeling the pressure to do that, and it was a, a competition. And the fact now, I'm also lucky too because I don't know what it would be like if you were a man in my situation who didn't get a lot of opportunities or girlfriends or things like that and then also was holding himself, that might have been a different situation. Because my friends couldn't make fun of me because I always had more girlfriends or I had more girls that wanted me than them. I was just choosing to refrain from that. So that was a little bit easier situation for me. So it was like a, a pride thing that like, hey, I have these options, but I choose not to do them. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So you know, it's I, I guess funny. it really depends on- It's funny you say that because um, we have this uh, belief that the- that a dominant male in, you know, throughout history or whatever, a dominant leader 
had access to lots of women and slept with lots of women. Well, it's because of Genghis Khan. That guy fucked right. everything. But what they're finding, but here's the thing though, what they're finding is there was there were rules and the rules. irony is there's way more power and not there is yeah there's there, way more power not only and I put that together as a young w- teenage women boy. put that together a long time ago not right, o- women figured that out a long time ago <laughs> yeah. I put that together we're in my teenage years yeah. and <laughs> but it's not only that it's Hold. that let's say let's say we're all in a tribe right let's we're evolving we're we're excuse me not evolving but we're hunter gatherers and we live in a tribe of you know 40 50 people or maybe in a community of 150 200 people and there's a man that is the leader. Now, he's not the leader because he can beat everybody up. That's what people think. People think the dominant guy is the strongest, toughest No, no, no. Jordan guy. Peterson covers this. It's, yeah. more, it's more so that he's the, he's the guy who- He's the guy everybody wants to lead. Right. Not only is he strong and he's tough, but then no, nobody either wants to overthrow him either because he's, he's not punking everybody. So. Right, because mm-hmm. if it was really a violent, dominant, you know, evil guy, well, five guys could take him out. Yeah. You know, when's he going to sleep? When's he going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. So really, it's the guy that all the other people want to lead. Now, that does make him extremely attractive to all the women of the tribe. Right. And if he really wanted to, he could probably have any woman, but he doesn't because if he did, then he would immediately get taken down or killed by the other men. Right. Right. So really, it's the, the fact that- The resent builds up. Yes. It's about the fact that he can, but he doesn't. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's really what it's like. That's really the whole maleness when it comes to being able to, because I think, again, we confuse it to, I can sleep with a bunch of women, and I do. Mm-hmm. You show that off to your buddies, and it kind of- it pushes the pendulum so far in that direction that, because I'm telling you, you guys that watch this documentary, as an, if I was a 15 year old boy watching the documentary, I'd be like, oh my God, they're having so much fun. Yeah. But now as a, as a grown man, I'm watching it and I'm like, whoa, like yeah. these kids are really trying hard to do what they think is cool, but it's kind of not. Well, it's you know? hard. Yeah. And then like as, as you're going through that process, all the testosterone, it just like muddies your, the way that you even think and assess, you know, whether things are a good idea, whether they're not, obviously like the risk goes way up. And so, you know, the excitement towards, you know, just like experience all these new mm-hmm. things and so yeah i think us watching that now with maturity and uh assessing kind of what's going on it's a totally different How, uh, perspective what did, what did you think about what did you you know here's a touchy third rail topic um oh, what did you go. what did you think about his theory on um disciplining and spanking and things like that did you remember do you remember that chapter where you got into that i did i did and i don't disagree with him um Really, the whole uh, I guess the the cor- the foundation of that chapter was have a few rules, but be solid with them. But don't have a ton of rules. Like if you have too many rules, it's like uh, it's like government. When government makes so many fucking rules that you start breaking these little rules, you stop respecting all rules and all laws. And this is what happened with prohibition. Prohibition, when they passed it, so many people broke the law that they found that people became lawbreakers in general it's like once you cross that line well he, he got into studies that talk about you know kids that had no structure or or discipline when they're younger the the rate of what they would potentially be as adults like mm-hmm. what they would turn into and it's like yeah he said have a few rules um he said uh give them the, the minimum required dose for discipline or whatever so like whatever the least amount you can do that'll get the point across. Right. That's what you need to do. The little micro corrections. Well, just wait, something he, that's he, effective he but made, more he than made, that. He made a point though that choosing opting not to spank them over something like that they did that's really bad, right? Like let's say for example, our kids, let's say we all have kids and they're playing together and my kid walks over and hits your kid out of nowhere. Mm. For me to not make a big deal about that immediately is going to do more harm to that kid later on than if I walk over and whacked him on the hand and say, don't you do that and scare him. So he made that point very clear mm. that parents that are so anti, because we are on this. Yeah, the severity of what whatever that interaction was, like it has to, you have to meet that. Well, really right. what he's talking about is uh, this generation of parents that are afraid well, to, to, to for their kids not to like them. They're afraid to discipline right. or punish them at all. He says it's in our nature that these kids will, your kid will, He's going. It's part of growth. They're going to dominate going, you. They're going to treat exactly. They're going yeah. to flirt with their boundaries. And if you don't set those boundaries, th- those boundaries will just keep extending, extending, extending. And yeah. so, learning to nip it as soon as you see it at three, four years old, yeah. right away, and address it. Oh, I've always known that. Is yeah. so important. But you, the reason why I bring it up because it's a controversial topic right now because uh, yeah. of you know laying hands on a kid is like absolutely well, absurd. And here's the thing: I, I don't, I particularly don't spank my kids because I'm effective with the other stuff that I. I do does that mean that it's off the table no if i had to use it i probably would but i just haven't you know i've only spanked my kids twice it was terrible it's, i hate doing it but what i do is pretty fucking effective now if i had a kid where 
that was something that I had to use, you know, um, then I don't know, you know, but yeah. I was spanked as a kid. I think I turned out okay for the most part. Right. Um, but you know, there's, there's spanking and there's beating, right. And all that oh, other oh, stuff. huge, yeah, huge yeah, difference. Yeah. And, and there's things that I think are, I think there's things that are called for and there's things that are not like, and he talks about this. He says, you know, coming home from a stressful day at work all day long and, and irritated and frustrated from your job and then wife's mad at you and then the kid spills milk on the fucking floor yeah. and you fucking spank him or you hit him. That's it's a total difference. He's not talking about yeah. that. Like, yeah, and, yeah, I, and yeah. I agree with that. Like, that's, you, that's your insecurity or that's yeah. your fucking issues as an adult that you're putting that on your child. That's mm-hmm. bad behavior. You're teaching them bad things that way. But being totally coherent, normal, happy, great day, playing with kids, and your kid fucking trucks some other kid well, and not doing anything about it. Is- I, I've had issues like that, too. Like, so, you know, the severity of it, right? So, like, yeah, my youngest, like, punched some kid, you know, because he just, I don't know, he wrestles and then decided to throw a punch. And so, you know, for me, it's a matter of, like, I have to remove myself from getting super pissed off, like, right away. So I'm like, we're going to deal with this. So I can I can assess like how I'm going to handle this specifically and what the severity of the punishment requires. And so I can breathe and sort of meditate on it. And then, you know, even if if which did require a spank, but the spank itself is just it's, it's a corrective sort of a mm-hmm. technique where it's like you get a snap. It's not I'm not hurting them yeah. at the same time, but I'm it's it's a. It's the anticipation of it. Well, you're training his brain at that point. You're exactly. training his it's brain to know when he does when he has behavior like that. He, there's a there's a negative reaction. That's a, that's what that yeah. is. You're, you're getting him out of that or if process, they're, or if they're going to put a fork in the socket or cross the street when they're not supposed. Yeah, to. Yeah, that's exactly. what he mentions. He mentions exactly. things where you're putting harm on someone yeah. else or danger to yourself. Those are the, that's there's like the severity spectrum. There's a few things with my kids that are like non negotiables. Like these are big fucking deals. Like one of them's integrity. If I, yeah. if you show any signs or anything that you're going to steal or cheat or lie or be that kind of person, which kids will test 100%. In fact, it's a sign of intelligence when kids lie and do that stuff. They're testing their boundaries. They're testing things. That is a big non-negotiable for me. You will demonstrate integrity. You will be an honest person, uh, hands down, bar none. The second thing is violence. You will not use violence except in self-defense. So you're not going to hit other people to try and dominate them. You're not going to, you know, my my son's not going to hit his sister, vice versa. You know, those kinds of things. And the third one for me was you are going to be a hard worker. If 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 you want to do something, then you work hard towards it and that's what gives things meaning because I will not tolerate a fucking apathetic, lazy, you know, whatever because I know in life, and I know how the world works, uh, at least where, we're, where we live here in, in the U.S., that if you're a hard worker, you're probably going to be okay. If you're lazy, I don't give a shit how smart you are. I don't right. care about all talent you are. If you're a lazy person, you're probably going to fucking have how a terrible How you do time. anything is how you do everything. Yeah. So those are the things I'm really hard, like really yeah. strict with my kids I on. know. I try and always stay on top of the integrity piece myself. It's yeah. just like that, that's something I'm always monitoring to see where, where, where it is. Yep, and then, oh, so here's something else in the current events here. So check out this headline here. Some scientists believe that kids with IQs in the top 5 to 10% of the population are at especially high risk for ADHD misdiagnosis. Mm. So they found that kids who are really, really smart tend to get diagnosed with ADHD (coughs) or ADD and then get medicated uh, as young kids, which is terrible. Yeah. And, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time when it comes to the school system, especially the public school system, because it's public and because it tends to be centrally controlled, you know, by the state, they they kind of look at the middle. And if you fall off on the ends, you're kind of fucked. Although if you go off the, the if you go off the low end where you're struggling and you're having a tough time. They have programs and stuff in place. If you're on the high end, there's nothing. Yeah. If you're a really smart kid and you're in school and you're and bored you're or whatever, and bored. you're fucked. Yeah, you are. You're having a tough, you're going to be bored. You're going to be, you might be medicated. I wonder how many kids are, that are gifted are being medicated out of their gift, you know, right now. Right. Think about that. Yeah. You know, if you think back to the, like Bill Gates or the Elon Musks of the world, uh, you know, I wonder if when they were kids, if they were kids today, would they be put on medications and then would that have prevented them from being who they were later on who are these great you know creators and disruptors yeah 
I know. Who, who's to say? Yeah, there's definitely the way that school is structured. Like, there's there's certain people that do very well within that structure and the rule system, and um, you know, sitting down and and learning and digesting and you know, girl, regurgitating. You know, girls do better than boys at that, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I did terrible generally. at that. I want to get up and move, and um, I want to I want to be I want applicable knowledge. Right. I want I want knowledge where I'm actually like doing something. Like I would that. argue though that that parents are fucking up more brilliant kids than 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 fucking the doctors are in the five. Yeah. Like, oh, it's all part like, of the whole thing. Like extracurricular activities to you as a parent it can, was, can pursue. It was a trip because after uh, I read the 12 rules, I'm sitting in, this was just this weekend, right? I'm sitting uh, at Target. I'm, I'm in my boots. So I can't really walk around much. And I, I sit down because my back's starting to bother me. So Katrina's kind of like shopping for the baby shower and I'm sitting down and I'm in my phone. So I'm not really paying attention. So obviously people around me aren't really paying attention to me either. I'm just kind of sitting there still like a statue. And this mother is looking for... Uh, her daughter and her daughter, uh, they they connect like right at me. They find each other at me. And she's probably, I don't know, 12 years old or so, somewhere there, give or take a year or two. And her mom just like comes unglued at her and just starts yelling at her and shit because she couldn't find her in the store for like 30 minutes and she was looking all over for her. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and I get it as a parent, you're probably, there's probably fear that happened lots there, of fear there, frustration that happened, lots of stuff, but she just comes unglued. And when she starts yelling at her, you know what she yells at her about? This is what tripped me out. Instead of letting the daughter know how much it scared her as a mother and the safety and things like that and like communicate to her, she starts yelling at this girl about her day. I've had a fucking 12 hour day today that I've been up on my feet all day long. Wow. The last fucking thing that I want to wow. deal with is trying to find your ass at the store. What are you? And just, and grabs her by her hand hella hard and like, and drags her and yeah, drives her straight. I'm like, and I guess because I just read that book, it was like fresh yeah. in my mind. Yeah. I'm thinking to myself like, fucking parent dude like really <sighs> that's tough like man. i get being frustrated i get all that stuff but you don't realize how important if if you are going to come at your kid hard like that you got to be thinking about how much of if, if this is my emotions and mm -hmm. my own shit that i'm putting on my kid that then later on is going to teach them so many things because now you I mean, katrina and i were talking about in the car about the because I, I told her because she didn't see you, and i was kind of sharing with her like man think of all the things that you're teaching that kid, one, that it's okay to do that in public. Two, it's okay to yell at your kid like that. Three, it's okay to hate your fucking job, too, because you're talking about how miserable 12 hours a day at work is. There's so many bad lessons feel, that are getting taught there. I like feel like the what straw she, that broke the camel's back, yep. probably. And I feel like store, what, she, you know? what she's teaching her kid is, uh, I had a shitty day and you're part of my shitty day. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. right. Not, probably, yeah. not the real thing was not real. I saw what really happened. Like I could, under, I could totally understand, even not having a child, yeah. how scary that could be for a parent to not be able to find them. But oh, really what it was, she was more angry about, it's been a long day of work, she's been on her foot, it's more inconvenient for her to find her, be looking for her kid for 30, and in the combination of yeah, being Yeah, I wonder scared. if she's like a single parent, you know what I mean? And like, th this, these are all factors of like where the elevation of stress, it, it just amounts to like a, a degree that's like, like so insane the hardest you know? thing so I, I have i tend to have a lot more empathy in that situation you know with the parent but at the same time you you have to check yourself on that like that's 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 your portrayal uh that, that's all your emotional you know like like you can't let yourself get to that 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 volume that that's where it becomes really problematic and your kid like ends up getting all the brunt of like your problems yeah i think you know the challenge as a parent is to because all I think all people have some level of damage and stress or whatever is to not <laughs> to pass it on. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, how challenging is that? I, right. I know me when I don't feel good. Well, that's what's going to happen is you're because and I look at this with my this is really tough because it, it's it doesn't guarantee that your kid's going to be a fuck up. It doesn't guarantee that your kid's going to, but it it definitely increases the chances that they're going to follow down the same footsteps as as these bad choices that you made as a parent. And I'm watching that happen to my two youngest siblings. Yeah, you know it's it's a it's a really tough thing being the older brother and and watching them literally follow down the same exact path as my two parents did and all of the troubles and the shit that they went through growing up and it's like and it's tough being the oldest and then having I have a good relationship with both my my mother and my stepfather and you know to think that this is really this is a result of how you parented these kids for you know, 15, 18 years of their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and now your, your heart breaks and you're frustrated with the decisions that they keep making and they keep fucking yeah, up. What do you and think doing, was going to happen? Yeah. what do you think that was going to happen? Like I'm fucking, it's a you're, tough pill to you're lucky me and yeah. the other one turned out okay. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because we are so adamant about being so different that we fucking went the other direction. Those two, they thought that this was life is, this is the norm. 
Yeah. And so they they don't even they can't even see outside their life and what they're going through because it looks just like a reflection of my my parents and the bullshit they they went through. And like you said, the language she used, like you know that that's the type of stuff you really have to assess the language you use with kids because yeah, if you're if you're projecting that all on them, like this is their fault, and the, you know. It, it that's where it's just it becomes this thing where it's like they feel that and then it, this becomes like a massive issue. You, you just you, you turn you end up turning into your parents. I mean, the physical representation of that is very clear with uh, ob- the obesity rates that you see with kids is crazy and inevitably both parents also obese. They're all eating this terrible food that causes other problems on top of it. It's um, it's an interesting conundrum. You know, it's an interesting situation that. I think it requires more awareness. I think people are so just that's it's that for yeah, sure. I just yeah. don't think they're aware, you know. Of, mm-hmm. uh, like we just I just talked about the ADD ADHD thing. Do you know that there are clear studies that show dietary changes have a f- profound impact on a kid if they have ADD or ADHD? Oh yeah. But the, the so pro- to us that seems so obvious. It but, has a clear impact. Yeah. It's a very clear impact. So I would venture to say a good chunk and I don't know what the percentage is cuz I'm not a researcher in this area and I'm not a doctor. But I bet you a good chunk of kids would go off their medications if their diets were changed and if they incorporated exercise. You know what the problem with that is? The problem is, as a parent, your kid eats what you eat. And so for a parent to either give their kid a pill or change everybody's diet, they're going to go with the easy one. Well, it's interesting, too. Like, And this is somewhat of a weird plug for Brain FM, but... uh, it, like how they were talking about like getting passes of the F, FCC or, or F, FDA about like using it experimenting, for experimenting yeah for ADHD that would um, be cool which would be which would be great just as an alternative to just taking chemicals cool. all the time yeah. you know? right. well I'll tell you what man so I just did another seventy two hour fast this weekend so I plan on doing one every month at the the first or second, probably the second weekend of every month, I'm going to do a serenade. What are you using to get out of it, right? When you come out of it, like I know you do your bone broth, and then you do anything else, or just so that? I, I initially broke it with the Thrive Market bone broth, which I really, really enjoy. Mm. It's a really good bone broth. Um, I also made my own bone broth for the first time in a crock pot, which came out uh, just exceptional. What I'll do is I'll take the bone broth and I'll blend it with a little bit of ghee, add a little bit of salt, and it's fucking delicious. But mm. Uh, but that's what I. That's the first meal that I have to break the seventy-two hour fast. Is I'll have like a cup of bone broth, then I'll wait a couple hours, and then I'll eat something else, and then that's pretty much it. Do you find it so easily digestible that way? It's just easy to digest. Yeah. It's you know it's got fats and minerals and some proteins. It's but, crazy how sensitive my stomach felt like with everything, even like with vegetables and things like that. Like it's when you go come off the two or three days like that. The first the yeah. first couple days after a fast, you got to be careful how much you feed yourself and right. stuff where you could have. Do you find like using, because I was using like the Organifi green juice and everything while I was doing that. Do you find like that's a, a better strategy when you first come out of it or going straight to veggies? Like what's your thoughts on that? So this time I'm trying something different. What are you doing? So- uh, we've I've been doing lots of research into the carnivore diet and all meat diet. Not I'm not going to be a carnivore. I'm not going to go, into, but but um, it, it makes perfect sense from an evolutionary standpoint that there were probably times when you just ate meat and mm-hmm. there were times when you just ate vegetables and there were times when you ate both. It's whatever you had. Kind of how you approached uh, vegan right. days and stuff like that. So and I know. My gut is, I have a very sensitive, obviously, gut. I have uh, uh, you know lots of gut issues. First off, the 72-hour fast is the best thing I've ever, the singular best thing I've ever done for that. Best thing I've ever done is that when I do go without food for 72 hours and then I start to refeed myself, it's, it's fucking, um, my gut becomes incredible. So that's number one. Number two, the cognitive and emotional benefits I get from it are, now that I've done it two months in a row, and that's one of the reasons why I want to do it every month, because if I do it frequently, I'm going to get more connected to the changes it's doing with my body. Not just the obvious ones, but the subtle ones. But my mood, holy shit, man. It's like it's like an antidepressant and I become way more energized. Almost like if I have coffee, but I don't. Which I'm also off coffee, by the way. So I haven't had any caffeine and I feel amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel good. It's very good for my gut. And researching with this carnivore diet, I know that plants tend to be... If you're going to have an intolerance to anything... The animal products will be egg whites and dairy, and then everything else is, tends to be plant. You know, gluten, nuts, yeah. seed. That kind of, you know. That's why I was wondering what you thought about the strategy of using like the green juice to kind of ease yourself back in. Like, what's your thoughts? I'm going to do that f- f- in five days. Okay. So in five days, I'll start doing the green juice and stuff like that from Organifi. But right now, what I'm doing for the next five days is all uh, I'm only having meat, 
some egg yolks maybe and bone broth and that's well, it. what's interesting too like uh, and i want to see what happens by the way i don't know yeah. if it's going to be great for me so you know how a lot of people attribute red meat to having uh, like very inflammatory response towards it I, I'm, I'm curious to kind of see like you know with a carnivore diet like how you, you know you, you work through that well so i know myself and i know that i get inflamed as fuck when i have gluten sugar uh you know those kinds of uh of course dairy because I'm, i have an intolerance to dairy but it's I usually don't have inflama- inflammation or issues with meat. So, yeah, I don't either. So, so for I know me, it's, some people have told me that. Right, and I'm sure that happens for some people. Yeah. But I'm going to try it for five days, see what happens, see how I feel because, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But I, I, I am going to be incorporating this fast every month. After I do it, during – first off, I tested my ketones on the P-strip. Mm. I know it's not super accurate, but if it shows there's ketones, you are in ketosis. Deep in ketosis, I could feel inflammation go down, energy's up. Clarity, mental clarity. Do you um, think too, like the elevation in mood uh, being more attributed to like running off of ketones? Is that there, there like a correlation there? I, yes. I, so what I think I may have a problem, and I think a lot of people have this problem, which is why it's common. Not everybody, but I think a lot of people have this problem. I may have a problem with glucose. I may have a problem utilizing it. Now, I'm not diabetic or pre-diabetic, but for some reason when I start eating you know, carbohydrates and I push the carbohydrates for a while, I just have my, I just don't think as clearly. I feel more foggy. I feel more fatigued. Even when I eat, you know, carbs that don't have, uh, that are, I don't have, um, uh, an intolerance to, although it's, it's much less of an effect. I still don't have the same clarity. And I think it may be that I'm just, I just don't utilize glucose that well. Hmm. And which could be partially genetics and partially because I, I may have fucked myself up I with the way I ate for years. Yeah, yeah, that's how I feel the same way. Too. I pushed everything, yeah, you know, yeah. when I was trying to gain weight and trying to gain muscle, I stuffed my face with everything, sugar, you know, process, whatever, any kind of calorie I could. And so I, w- I, w- I would imagine that had some kind of an effect on me because I shouldn't feel like shit after eating a meal. And that's what happens. If I eat bread, pasta, rice, potatoes if i eat a lot of them i want to take a nap you know 40 minutes later or an hour later that's not that's that's a sign right that something's going on so yeah. so totally different but what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to go at the beginning of every month 72 hour fast then i'm going to ease my way in keto 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 then the last week of the month or the week before i go on the fast i'll start throwing in carbs again for uh, for variety and then i'll go fast and reset the cycle and we'll see how long i do this but mm-hmm. so far so good Bird. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Krishish311. Krishish. Krishish. Sheesh. Are you worried people will use too much intensity with Maps Hit? Oh, the new program. Oh, shit. Well, Doug, Doug, when's the. When's what I the love hit? is when you merge it together, Maps and Hit, it's. Maps shit. It's the shit. Yep. <laughs> when does. Does this episode drop at the same time as the episode that talks about Maps Hit? Yeah, this is going to drop at 4 p.m. Pacific on Tuesday. And then at 6 p.m., we have our YouTube. Oh, it's coming in but high. When does, that, when does that bonus episode drop? Is that tonight? Oh, the bonus episode will be dropping right after this. At the same time or whatever. Same time, yeah. yeah. So for if you haven't heard the bonus episode, and if you're and again, you'll if you're listening to this before the YouTube live YouTube comes out, we have a new maps coming out. It's maps hit. It is high intensity interval training, but it's programmed by us, so it's good programming. We have incorporated quite a few things in there, but it is intense because it is a six week we okay, so here's the deal. We got a lot of people constantly since we started Mind Pump, a lot of people would tell us What's the best program? I want to burn as much body fat as possible in a short period of time. Obviously, that's a big common thing. And we've pushed against it because we wanted to make sure people had good exercise programming that bolstered their immune system, excuse me, bolstered their uh, metabolism, 
that strengthened their body. Yeah. They gave them long term results as well. Right, because this is where they want to go first. Right. And yes. This, and this is the mentality. This is why it took so long for us to put a program like this out here because we wanted to establish those. I keep using this word, but prerequisites. So, you know, we want to establish a, a, a solid foundation, a, a, an understanding of training, an understanding of your body in the way that your joints are supposed to function. And now we get to kind of flirt with some of the the crazy. Right. And so this, we we said, okay, let's design a program that will burn as many calories and as much fat in a short period of time. So MAPS hit is six weeks long. It's all about burning body fat and conditioning. But we also, uh, tr- we programmed it in a way where you could scale it. So there's three levels. And we also programmed in mobility, what are called flow sessions in there. Because with high intensity interval training, <laughs> injury tends to be higher risk because of the intensity. Now, can you use too much intensity with maps hit? Of course, you can use it too much intensity with anything and it depends on your body. Mm-hmm. There's three levels in maps hit and the third level is the most difficult. And if you go into it and you're not in fucking awesome shape and you think I'm just going to go level three because I want to burn more body fat, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. You're, you're better off starting in you know level one type of deal. But. Well, and we get into this. So those that are concerned or are curi- more curious about this, we get into this in that short uh, episode that's all about maps hit what why we created it what we're talking about right now i mean this program is the only program that comes with a warning uh all, all of our other programs we don't have a, a big big red warning when you first open it up and that's our one concern was to make sure that people understood that this is something that you phase in and out or you intermittently use it within your current routine that you're doing right now it does not it's not a long-term sustainable program we don't highly recommend that at all so we get into that with depth now the hit launch is going right now so you you've got an opportunity to get it for twenty dollars off plus get the free t-shirt right now and i how many more days will that last doug after this goes live so they have a couple days yeah, until Saturday evening. Okay. Okay, so just our site, mindpumpmedia.com. You do the code. Make sure you enter the coupon code HIT Launch. Now it's HIT spelled with two I's. So it's H I I T Launch, all uppercase, and you'll get 20% off, excuse uh, me, $20, $20 off, off, and a free t shirt. But in, you know, not to go off topic, uh, this is a question that I get on all kinds of things like, can you use too much intensity? Absolutely. You yeah. know, when you look at all it's the, the easiest thing that can happen, when you, that's the number one thing. That's yeah. what everybody throws too much at. When you have, when you look at all the variables that you can play with for your workouts, your volume, which is your total workload, your intensity, the duration, how long your workouts are, rep speed, you know, your intent, all these different things. If you put them all, if you apply them all in the right, ways, you'll get excellent results. So if you think of the potential for your body at a hundred, like if you do everything perfect, you will hit a hundred in terms of results with your particular genetic makeup, right? Every time one of those factors is throw is off, you take away from that hundred, 100. So if you, if you apply too much intensity, now maybe you're only 50% of your potential. This is true for all the variables. So when it comes to intensity, for sure, more is not better. That is not true. More is better until it's not. And then you're now it's worse. So always, I always recommend people, and I learned, this is a lesson I learned as a personal trainer, and it took me fucking years to learn it, to err on the side of less intensity because it's easier to ramp up slowly from there than it is to, oh shit, we did too much. Now we got to try and back off, but oh shit, now your central nervous system's fried. Now you're trying to recover. Now we got to do all this back, you know, like, trying to backtrack or whatever. It's way more difficult. So err on the side of maybe a little bit too little intensity and then slowly ramp up from there. Way better approach, I think. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Tim Imbo. How do your significant others respond to the amount of time you invest in social media? Do you have external help or are you really that persistent on your own? Constant challenge. Well, that persistent, is he asking if the, if we're having other people do that or do we actually manage? We manage all of our own stuff. So that's something that we take a lot of pride in that we answer. Um, I mean, I, I rarely ever miss a DM and, and knock on wood because sometimes it takes me 
a few days. At some at some point. Yeah, at possible. some point, I, I I pretty much answer every single DM that gets sent my way right yeah. now. I still can. It takes a lot of fucking dedication on my part. Uh, the boys and I are on the forum every single day, commenting and, and answering as much as we possibly can on there. Same thing goes with Facebook, YouTube, and all the other platforms. So you know, right now we manage it, and I'm sure the guys are probably the same as me. Um, my girl halfway hates me for it. You know, she 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 knows that it's um. But she gets it, right? So I think there's a difference between consuming social media and then using it as a tool for as a, as a business, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, and that's and, the hard part. And she'll call me out on it, right? Like if she comes walks by me, and, and I'm guilty of this, where it starts off, I'm working, I answer the ten DMs that I just got, I respond to them, I answer my emails, I get on the forum, I answer a question or two. And then I go, then I read, read an article and then I go down a rabbit hole. The next thing you know, I'm watching like, you know, uh, you know, monkeys dancing with bulldogs or something weird, you know, like, so when she catches me doing that, like th- then she'll I see that video, right? <laughs> then she'll call me out right on some shit like that. Like, listen, that's, I know you're not working now now. And I'm like, you're right. You're right. You know, yeah. but it's, so it's easy to get sucked into that and you've got to be careful with that. But I, at the same time too. You know, Katrina gives me a lot of latitude when it comes to this because she understands that, you know, 90% of this business revolves around social media and the interaction that we all have with our audience and our and our people that are, are looking for help from us. So uh, it was something that each of us did uh, and prided ourselves on when we first started was being able to give, give, give as much as we possibly could. It's why, uh, I mean, I still get this to this day when we release a program I must have had 30 DMs of people that reached out and said, hey, I bought the program. I'm doing something else right now, but I always want to show my support for you guys because you've provided, you've changed my life, you've given so much to me. I'll forever buy anything that you you put out there. So, And I think that's just a testament to how much we all give on, on the social platforms and engage with our audience. I don't know too many people at the size and that we're doing. Now, mind you, there's three of us, right? So. Yeah. I think it's a little bit easier than some. Yeah, companies. I think we all have that mentality that we want to just keep, you know, being as accessible as we possibly can and, and giving back and, um, you know, answering questions, obviously, and like being available. Um, I think it's it's gone to a point where, yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, interactions, a lot of emails. It's a lot of, you know, forum like posts and things to read. And, um, you know, so my strategy has changed significantly from just kind of like responding based off of like when it comes in and this and that, like I've been trying to be more active, like in the morning as much as possible then throughout my day. So that way the end of my day, like it's really tough. Like I have to, I have to be more, I'm, I'm trying to implement more discipline within trying to be efficient and throughout the day versus at night and just kind of responding. Cause that's family time to me. And that's time where I have to spend, um, you know, being present and being Mm -hmm. present with my kids and being present with my wife and doing things that will, uh, benefit, you know, my, my family environment, my family household. And so, um, these are just things to, to figure out the balance. And this has been a process, you know? And so I think like it's coming close to like, okay, I can, I can manage this within this window and like, I want to try and stay as firm as I can to that, but I will also intermittently check, and see if there's a, a, a pressing issue that I need to respond to, and I'm going to respond. Yeah, I, this is a constant because we're we're on social media so much because of our work, because we, we want to connect with people, we want to answer questions and help them. Then you're on social media, and I've caught myself where I'll go through, answer questions, do some work, and then I'm fucking juggling between social media platforms, just looking at shit, mm-hmm. Bing, 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 and I'll catch myself. And it's so funny is that. I don't always catch myself. That's how unaware it is. It's such a mindless thing when you're on your phone that then I'll catch myself and I'll be like, what am, I, did I just sit here for 35 minutes or 40 minutes bouncing between social media platforms, not really do anything productive, but just you know, kind of occupying my brain and wasting time? And so I honestly think, for me at least, I can speak for myself, just like, and I, I, I use nutrition uh, as uh, an example of this because um, I think it's very similar. You know, when we, when with the introduction of highly palatable processed foods came the responsibility to, you know, kind of watch what you eat. You know, we didn't have that. We never had that problem before. Like we didn't have to because you didn't have food all the time. So 
all of a sudden now I can overeat and I can have any flavor I want, any color, any texture. And the side effect of that is illness, sickness, diabetes, all these problems. With social media, you know, we we didn't have that problem before because it wasn't there. Now we have it. I think it's going to require conscious fuck yeah, it is, bro. conscious tracking, like we do with food. Like, how do you take someone to intuitive eating? Well, it go, you got to go through a fucking process of tracking. You got to go through a process of paying attention and being regimented before you can move to a, po- a point where it becomes automatic. I think that's with social media. I don't think it's going to happen on its own for me. So for me, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out ways where I can structure it. And I don't know if that's, and I don't know anybody who does this, so I'm kind of trying to invent it. And so I've had a couple thoughts. One of them, Justin said something a few episodes ago that I thought was brilliant, and that's he plugs his phone in when he gets home to charge, and that's where it stays. He doesn't pull it off the wire. So the only way he can check his phone is if he walks over Mm -hmm. and checks it. And so I'm thinking of doing that and putting it in a place that is kind of strange, not somewhere I can sit down and relax, but where I have to stand at the counter or something, so it's obvious. Yeah. So I was thinking about doing that. I was thinking about um, scheduling, literally scheduling time. So before work, lunch, and right after work, and then maybe one more time before bed or something like that, and then that's it. And other than that, in between, I'll only answer phone calls and texts if, or if I need to. Otherwise, just stay off it completely, just like you would track your food where – you know, your proteins, your fats, your carbs, these are my meals. Mm. I plan them out ahead That's of time smart. because I don't think it's, I don't, I, I don't think I can do it otherwise. I don't think I could do it without tracking first because I've tried already. I've tried the whole, well, I'll just try and be on less and I'll just try. And it's, it's, I end up fucking keep going back. I go back to more and more use and more and more use. And, you know, Jessica points it out to me and she'll, she'll tell me like, cause she'll get angry cause she'll be talking to me and mid sentence, I'll check my phone. That's fucking rude. Yeah. But you know what's funny is I'm not even, I don't even realize I'm doing it and she'll call it out and get mad at me and then I'll get mad because she gets mad at me and then 10 minutes later when I cool down and my ego's fucking relaxed, I'll be like, well, she's right. That's fucking rude to go on your phone right. while someone's talking to you about something. So I think I need to have some kind of structure and I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm going to try Justin's thing first where I come home, plug it in, put it over in the corner and then it doesn't leave that spot. And that should make it more, make me more aware because I'm gonna have to get up, walk over, mm-hmm. check it. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. At the end so. of the day, I, I, you know, it's a, it's pretty challenging where we're at in this because I think it would be that hard for me if, if so much of it didn't revolve around the business. Yeah, if it was like entertainment. Yeah, like I have self discipline to be like, I'm not going to be a mush and fucking Instagram all day long because I, because <laughs> I need to fulfill this. You're like, right. I wouldn't be on it totally. at all. No, yeah. I wouldn't either. I mean, I remember w- how reluctant I was. Yeah. Go, yeah. I mean, I, but, I but this is advice for the kids, man. That grew yeah. Up that well, no, no, no. I mean, I, we just had someone asked us a question the other day about, you know, what are the things, you know, how we evolve and how they're, we tend to look back 20 years ago. We were doing this. How stupid is that? What are we doing right now that we're going to look back and go, how stupid is, are we, what we were doing? Mm-hmm. I predict. The, the cell phone thing. I mm-hmm. predict the addiction to social media is, is going to be something that- I would and, love if we didn't have to use them anymore, well, and, and, but we were still interacting you know, when we wanted to. It's only going to take a, a I, in my opinion, it's only going to take another 10 or 15 years of the abuse of it to start to see some serious outcome of posture and behavioral addiction and what do these kids look like that grew up with it since day one being addicted to it all the way to adulthood and what, what's happening with them. I think when those studies start really coming out, and you're starting to see a little bit here and there once those um start to come out a lot i think that's when we're going to look back and go like what the fuck were we thinking Bro, when your interaction yeah. and it'll become like a smoking thing again where it's not cool or like you see people pull up mm-hmm. right now it's like it's you're watching it increase like i just two years ago you're remember, waiting for the black backlash right it's yeah. and the backlash is coming soon soon you're going to see that and i wouldn't be surprised if you start to see certain restaurants that try and encourage it by saying, please keep your phones away at it's dinner. It's going to become totally socially unacceptable. Yeah. Well, I completely agree heard, with that. Have you yeah. heard too, like, so I heard this, I think it was Joe Rogan, that what they do now for like comedy shows, like their institute, they have a business that actually takes and manages your cell phone. And so like you check it in. So you check your cell phone in. Um, and then that way, like you, nobody's allowed to have a cell phone as they watch the show. Mm. And then, you know, as you come back, you have like a like a tag, just like you're checking in your your coat. And then, uh, you know, you get your cell phone back and all that stuff. But uh, you're going to see more and more of that, I believe. Mm-hmm. I, I feel believe, like it's going to be everywhere. I believe yeah. right now you have company or you have businesses like Applebee's and things like that that are catering to it. 
you know, by putting a fucking digital thing on there to play games and interact, which I think on their, from their point, it's smart because they're jumping on the, the rise of this right now. But I do believe like m- much many things that we'll see the pendulum swing the other way when it gets out of control, especially when we start to see the damage that it's doing. I can see my posture change already myself. Like I can, I can see it and feel the difference already of the forward head. Mm-hmm. It's accelerated in the last like three years of my life than it did in the previous thirty years of my life. So I feel like my eyes have been severely affected right. too. Like I'm always wearing glasses now, and I, it was like it accelerated like over the last two years. That fast made a big. I noticed something big with the fast too was everything seemed so sensitive, like nutritionally, but it even seemed really, everything seemed really sensitive, like even with like the computers. Like, yep. So right now I've, I've now trained myself to where I could stare at a goddamn screen almost all day long and be okay. After that fast we had, I noticed that after like an hour or so of staring at the screen, two hours, Getting I started to get a headache and yeah. shit. And so That's that was weird. Like, you, I didn't even re- put that together, dude. But oh, I had the same response. Yes. Dude, that was, I'm telling that was you. a big flag for me that like, whoa, yeah. sure. I can just, and your body, you know, you start off with one hour, then two hours, then four hours, then five hours, or maybe eight hours a day you're spending looking at either a computer screen, a phone screen, or a TV screen, and it's not affecting me anymore. But to me, that's because I've let my body get adapted to that slowly over time, and that it's not affecting me negatively, or at least I don't, I can't see it because I've probably down-regulated some, some places in my body and my brain. Now I'm back to, after the fast, oh my God, reset all that. One two hours staring at the screen and I'm getting headaches. Dude, one of that's one of the reasons why I want to fast every month is also because of that. I, I notice, and I don't know what better word. I don't know a better word. So please excuse me, but the emotional spiritual uh, benefits. And so I'm only saying I don't mean necessarily I'm you know talking to God, but what I mean is I feel more clear with my abuse of my phone. I feel more clear with how I communicate with my kids, the people around me, because I. I do think that food can be extremely numbing. I really do. And it's funny because when you fast for a few days, you realize like, okay, what am I going to do right now? Normally be like, let's go grab some food. Like this is a great way to take, take up time. Now that I'm not eating, uh, what am I going to do now? And so we don't have that thing to distract you and numb you. It tends to make you a little bit more aware. But I do think with, uh, this, with social media, I completely agree with you, Adam. I think it will become socially unacceptable. I think people will go to restaurants and places that ban phones because they feel like they need to go somewhere to ban phones. You know what I mean? Like, oh, cool. I get to go there. So with my friends. Right. I can day. guarantee that I'm going to have great interaction with my friends because yeah. that place doesn't allow us to come phones. There will be someone. You'll see. It's not yet. But when you start to see that come out where you see more and more negative from all this tech, then you'll see companies Bro. that will jump that will be different. They'll mm-hmm. want to be different. They're going to say this and this will be the beginning of the divide yeah. that I believe of the plug and the unplugged. Dude, if I had a bar chain or whatever, I would have that as like mandatory. Like Cuz no doubt nobody's allowed any phones. I bet no that doubt, would be a thing. No be doubt. Great. I would love to go there. There will also be the thing on the other side which will more interactive places when you walk in and your 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 phone's <laughs> automatically populated to the menu, yeah. and you just order You're right from the your profile from the person you, sitting at the bar, so yes. you come in. And so, like, oh, you just because like I'm saying that doesn't mean everybody's going to change. I believe we're going to hey, start to see a division of For people. Sure that uh, want to see more of that, want to be more player one, and then you're going to see the other side of people that want to become more unplugged, and mm-hmm. I think we're going to see What it. is your guys' like, instinctual reaction when your girls tell you, oh, you're on your phone too much? Like Right away, how do you feel? Well- it depends on what I'm currently doing when she calls it out. Yeah. If I'm if I'm doing I something, I used to get angry. Like so, I'm pretty good about being objective, right? So if if she says that to me and I look down and I'm like I'm doing like I'm creating a post, I'm responding to a forum member, I'm um, so that I'll tell her like, hey, I'm working right now. But if she calls me out and I'm like right in the middle of like, just tr- yeah, trolling, you know what I'm saying, or bullshitting or just consuming, then I check myself and I'm like, you're right, you know what I'm saying, I don't need to be on it right now because I find my instinct is to get irritated. Because you're telling me to stop doing something, and yeah. then it makes me super hyper aware of just how addicting this fucking thing is. Because why am I so irritated right now that you told me? Well, see, Katrina won't. She's smart. She yeah. won't tell me. She'll just ask me. She's like, "Oh, what are you doing?" Uh-huh. And it's, so she'll make me think about it. You know, what I'm saying. And I look uh, down at her. I'm like, she's in the living room. You know, stuff's going. Fires going. She's doing something. And, and I'm instead of being there and being present with her, I'm working, or I could be consuming. And if yeah. I'm consuming, Courtney is not a salesman. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that. Out there. She's just like, get off your phone. You've been fucking on that all day, yeah. you know, or whatever. And it's been like, you know, one minute 
<laughs> and I'm like doing something. And I'm just like, and then I get angry. But then, yeah. So this is where it's been. It's been that thing. Like, am I getting angry because you know, you know, like I'm. I feel like I'm doing something valuable right now. Or is, am I getting angry at myself? You know, for you know being consumed by this. Or am I getting angry that I'm just being told what to do? Well, and I'm going to defend our defend us too in this because there's been time just recently. Um, Katrina came home from work, you know, it was like four or five o'clock and I was in the thick of like writing a very long, long post or email. I don't even remember what it was, but yeah. I know I was, v- I was very into it and she come walking in and she just like kissed me, cut in between me being on my computer and stuff like that. And then, you know, hugging on me and, oh, wanted to talk right then and there about a date. I'm like mid sentence of writing something. And you could tell that she just wasn't getting it back from me very much. And she's like, could you just put that down for a minute? I want to talk to you about your day. I said, honey, I know that you've had a very long day today and your day is over and you're now in, you've now got home and you want to relax, unwind, shut off from business and work and you want to communicate with your partner and, and enjoy that process. I would love to enjoy that process with you, but you just interrupted me in the middle of my train of thought and I'm in the middle of working and I'm in work mode right now and I've been in work mode for the last hour and I can't wait to get to where I shut down just like you and we can do that. Yeah. So I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be mean to you. But, you know, get out of my way you right now. You just reminded me of, yeah, a uh, frustration with that because, yeah, I, I'll i get in moments where I'm, like, deep in thought and, like, I really have to, like, string my thoughts together and then put it down. And, uh, you know, sometimes – so I'll go – that's why I created the office. I try to, like, designate, well, if I'm in there, then – but sometimes – That's a good I'll, idea. I'll, sometimes I'll, like, be in the living room and I'm, like, trying to respond and write some long post and she'll just start talking to me and I'm like, just a second, you know, and I'm still writing. and but. She keeps like giving me all these details, 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 Man, details. Maybe. And then it's like later on I get in trouble and I'm like, listen, like I was like, I can't like, I can't multitask. I can't listen to your details while I'm deep in thought with trying to write this. So it's like, that's like a constant Dude, battle. maybe you just hit on something that would be a great strategy is having your at home office and then making a deal with wifey is that, listen, if I'm sitting at my desk, if I made the effort to get up out of the mm-hmm. living room, walk into my office, right. sit down and get on a computer, get on my phone, well, that's I'm where working. You plug, that's where you plug your phone in, right? Yes. So and that, that's what I've been trying. I've been trying right. so hard. Because to, to me, that's fair. Because that's, like, yeah, that's no different than you that. still being at the office that's right. at, at, at somewhere else like that. And it's wow. like, hey, listen, I'm in my workspace right now. That's right. You just kind of create that. Yeah. Right. And then if I'm on my couch in front of my fire or whatever like that, then you've got me, no, I'm literally going to do what, what Justin said uh, a few episodes ago. I, as a matter of fact, I was talking, I was thinking about doing it starting at this weekend, but for sure I'm going to do that because I feel like that's a good starting point. Yeah. Right? Next question is from O'Rourke Q. There was a recent news article in California about petitioning to ban tackle football for kids under high school age. Are we becoming too nerf? I like that. Yeah. What's everyone's thoughts on the topic, especially the dads of the group? So. Uh, fuck you, Quinn. You first, want to know my opinion or what? Yeah, for, first, <laughs> uh, first off, uh, I fucking called it. This is 100% what I th- knew would start to happen. Now, it hasn't been made law. Just more regulations. But huh? it's been pati- as soon as they knew that there was dangers, I knew that you know the state would come out and be like, because what the state does- Why can't we just let our parents parent and make that decision? Exactly. Make, let the parent- Bro, like If you as a parent can't make that-, that. If, Yeah, if you can't control your household your and get your kid to decide to- play football or not play football, then why should you ask be- government to get involved? Because government's job is they literally sit down and they think, what else can we control? What else can we regulate? What else can we do? And so they're always trying to find things. The funny thing is, you know, you take all the kids that are that are killed from tackle football under high school age, it does it pales in comparison to the amount of kids that drown in swimming pools, but I don't see them trying to ban yeah. swimming pools. And it's because or fall out of windows. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. The how reason, often that happens. The re, now is football dangerous? Definitely. Can it cause you know problems with the brain? Yeah, especially the bigger you get and the harder you hit. But a law, really? Are we going to make a fucking? This is crazy to me. It's insane that we're going to make a law against it because you know what's going to end up happening. Okay, let's just. I doubt this law will pass, but let's say it did. Let's say it became illegal for kids under high school age to play football. Mm-hmm. You know what that means when they enter high school? They're going to play football in high school, and they're not going to know how to fucking hit. Yeah. They're not going to know the technique because it's very technical, the way you hit someone, whatever, and well, they're going to get fucking or hurt. They're, or they're not going to be good enough to even play. Yeah. They're, they're they're gonna, gonna, no, no one's going to let them on the team because they're not any good because bro, they didn't get a chance to play when they are younger. Well, if they're in California, they're playing with other California kids. But look, you know, uh, Justin, you played football for a long time. Imagine a fucking kid 
first time he ever hit someone with the pads. Now he hasn't played football ever, and he's like yeah. 14, 15 years old. Yeah, that's that's injury. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, but uh, to be fair, like that's exactly how I, you know, got into football. I I started playing when I was a freshman in high school, and uh, but the thing is. I was leading up to that. I was playing soccer before that and like slide tackling. I really was a physical kind of a player, even with, with basketball, I was very physical. Um, but yeah, I didn't know the techniques and like there was kids on the team that had played um, peewee football and really understood the game and understood leverage and understood technique. And um, you know, especially with tackling, it's, you have to master the technique of tackling to be able to prevent injury and to keep kids safe and to not use their head and, you know, all these things that you need to implement. Um, it just, to me, it just screams, it makes it more taboo. And then, you know, it, it becomes one of those things that like, uh, to me, it just, it, it feels like people, people need, like they need to feel like okay, this is gonna help because it's safer or whatever. Like uh, we're, you know, we're, we're doing everybody justice. Well, I feel like it, individually, like the parents and, and the kids can decide. Like it, obviously, there's gonna be risks in all these different sports. We we can't just like you know put all these regulations here. We have to let them decide. The individual decide. It, 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 the the irony of this is here's what the irony is. Let's say they pat because let's say their goals are good. Let's say they have good intentions. Like okay, we wanna. We want to prevent kids from playing football at a young age because it's dangerous. And that's really the intentions, which I don't think it is, but let's say it is. And they pass this law. What they're going to do is they're going to cause a backlash where people who don't like to be forced to not do something, who really like football or whatever, are going to say, fuck you. We're going to keep playing football. Other states are going to be like, we're never going to pass laws like this. Instead, what they need to do is you just keep putting out information. If there's studies that show it's dangerous, fine. Put the studies out. Let people make that decision. Let football evolve because that's what will happen. Trying to ban it right. is going to do the exact opposite. Is yeah. that people are going to cling to it and they're going to do it more and right. they're going to make more more market. education is better. That's right. And I feel like yeah, exactly to your point. Like like parents should know the ramifications. They should know like it's you know in the developmental process. Okay, if they get hit X amount of times, like what this may lead to, or like you know you can kind of evaluate it from there, but. Um, at the end of the day, like let people have the freedom to to do crazy stuff too. Like it's it, there's so much more. Like it, and even if you weigh it out as like, um, you know, what is my kid going to get out of this experience? Well, I'll tell you, dude, he's going to get a, a lot, right? A lot out of that experience. He's going to get learning how to you know uh, navigate in extreme uh, uh, cause and, and effect. Like, you know, how, how can I make decisions like super quickly? How can I work with other people? And then how can we conquer like insurmountable odds? Like sometimes I was on the field and I'm like, we're getting fucking killed. How do I, how do we, you know, rally against this? And then, and these are just like mm -hmm. impressionable things that will last with me forever. That's right. There's a reason why people are so passionate about sports and it's not because they like to play a game. You know, it's not just the game. And I, I wasn't an athlete in that particular sense, but I do respect and understand that sports have rules. You follow the rules in order to accomplish an objective. You play on a team, or even if you're not on a team and you're individual, you are learning how to navigate challenges, how to deal with failure, and how to handle success, which sounds to me like a perfect microchasm of life. Yeah. Well, it exactly. You know what I'm saying? It exactly. reveals so much about your character. Many people say that sports build character, but what it really does is reveal character and it creates this like, oh shit, this is the type of person I am. When I, when things are tough, do I cry and go and, and quit or do I do I you know fight back and right. do I do I And maybe I, that's the you know that's maybe that's how you respond initially. Right. But then you grow. Right. You grow as an individual and you understand like how much more effective it is when you actually stick in the trenches and, and, you, and, you, and you work through it. Next question is from anointed, anointed fighter. Oh, 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 oh. He's anointed. <laughs> what do you guys think about the whole Kratom issue going on with the FDA? <laughs> of course. Of course this would happen. So Kratom <laughs> is a plant uh, found in Southeast Asia that has uh, analgesic properties, pain-killing properties. Some people say they get euphoric from it. But really, the reason why it's gaining a lot of popularity is you're seeing quite a few anecdotes of people who are going off opiates and using Kratom as a, as a way to get off 
That sounds terrible. The opiates. Yeah. Right? Let's keep yeah. them on the opiates. Yeah, exactly. Um, there have been some deaths associated with Kratom. Uh, I read some articles, something like 44. The problem is most of those deaths, the people were taking other drugs as well. So it sounds to me like there are people out there, of course, who are buying Kratom, trying to use it as a party drug and combining it with other drugs. There's always going to be those people. Yes, and then they're going to have- an eff- uh, How's that know, working out for them? About, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But um, you know, I've, got, I've dived into Kratom. I've examined it. I've seen that. Are there addictive properties? Yes. Potential ones. Is it anywhere near the addictive- properties no. of opiates no not even fucking close not even cl- bro, i didn't i didn't honestly i didn't have i didn't feel much from it you tried it yeah That's yeah right. yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah yeah when i was coming off of the vicodin and stuff i i used it to see if it would help and i honestly didn't i didn't notice anything where do it's you, not an opiate where do you get it from you, you the, can buy it online yeah you can buy it online, online. Yeah, yeah but it's it, it's quite the process yeah. even then it's not like you can get it on amazon dude let me let me tell you something the second something comes out that can replace the biggest cash cow in fucking pharmaceutical drugs. Well, that's why opiates. we see why marijuana's had such a hard time. Of course. Yeah. yeah that's why of course, because it's not, it's a plant. Of course, the FDA is going to re- want to regulate it because the FDA's job, part of the FDA's job is to protect co- the other company, drug companies from competition. Yep. If something comes out, like marijuana, let's just, for, okay, so Kratom could potentially be dangerous if you overdose or whatever. Marijuana, good luck trying to overdose on it. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Totally safe from that partic- particular standpoint. Why is marijuana still federally Schedule 1? There's no fucking reason. It makes no damn sense, except for the fact that it is competitive with painkillers and anxiety drugs and, and drugs that help you go to sleep. So the FDA's job literally is protecting the other companies from competition. That's, I think, what's happening with Kratom. It's coming out. More people are using it. More people are using it for pain. They're replacing their opiates. And F- Big Pharma doesn't like that. FDA doesn't like that. Big Pharma doesn't like it. So they're going to try it. And what they're, what they're saying is that they want to schedule it as a Schedule 1, which is a higher scheduling than opiates even. I believe Schedule – I think op- – yeah, opiates, because they're prescribed, they're not Schedule 1. Schedule 1 That's means crazy. no medicinal use, no, uh, no use whatsoever, Stupid. which I think is, yeah, absolutely ridiculous. I think at the very least or at the very most, you know, if it's one of those kinds of substances with, you know, high abuse potential, that kind of stuff, which I don't think it is from what I've read, but – Maybe just say you got to be 18, you know, to buy it or something like that. Mm -hmm. But banning it completely, you know what you're going to do? You're just going to create a fucking black market and there's going to be a lot of synthetic copycat drugs like there was with marijuana that end up being much worse. Yeah. You know? People turn into zombies. Have you read about the overdoses that people have been doing on these um, synthetic marijuana Right, that's been happening for a long time now. I mean, yeah, and it's a hundred. None of that would have happened if, if marijuana was right, right, legalized. Because otherwise, why are they be, being forced to do this? So, I think it's, uh, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's crazy. It's a hundred percent corruption. I don't think this has anything to do with the best interest of. Well, the it's kind of. I think it's an obvious answer for us personally, just because I think we're all in, in agreement with you know we're we're free market guys. So I think that we I would. I think that all drugs should not be. Yeah. I don't think we should have anything that's like well, Schedule One. And right. I, I, I'm I, all for more competitive options. Right. I think there. I think there should be a great universal place where you could find education on all of them and studies to show that the deaths and show the things that could happen from it and the addictive. Pro- I think that we should be better educated on all drugs, and then I literally believe it should be up to parenting to to manage that. And I think some people that are listening like that, oh my God, that'd be crazy. And then if teenage boys and girls could give it to each other and do, it's like, well, yeah, you're thinking so extreme right now. But like we talked about earlier with the whole alcohol analogy, if it was something that was around in our society all the time and you had examples in your life of you've seen people that have used it and died or done things and got fucked up, like you'd be surprised how, you know, how smart humans and kids are after a while when you start to see that Dude, they don't do that you so know? and it sounds crazy to say that some people listening might be like well that's crazy what well we get 16 years old we give them a driver's license and they drive a car they could do a lot more harm to themselves in a vehicle of course there's nothing to stop them from doing 120 mile an hour donuts around some fucking you know right. but yet we we hope we hope that they have the the smarts to not do some of these things well the, so the belief there's two there's two problems with our current pol- uh, belief system around drugs one is that it's the drug itself that causes the problems, which is false. You know how many people do cocaine and drink alcohol and try a cigarette every day and don't become addicted? 
way more than become addictive. Way, 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 way more. Mm-hmm. So there's that case. Now, do different drugs have different physical and physiological addictive properties? They definitely do. But there's a lot more than just the drug. So that's number one. But the second thing is most <coughs> every, most people today, alive today, grew up with drugs being highly, highly regulated or banned. So they don't know any better. So yeah. to them, it's like, oh, no, they, you know, if it's, if it's just going to be legal, the whole world's going to go crazy. But we do have an example. We do have a real world example of a country that uh, didn't legalize, they decriminalized. There's a difference now. Legalization means stores sell it and it's in, you know, it's it's part of the free market, you know, type of deal or part of the market. Decriminalization means if you get caught with like a personal amount, which this is the we're not throwing you. This in is what I'm pro for. Like yeah. I'm not trying to say like you kids should be able to go down to the Seven Eleven and pick up no. a thing of heroin or fucking cocaine. No, I agree like, with I you. I agree with you. I think step one is decriminalization. See what happens there, and then maybe depending on the substance, maybe we look at legalization. But we do have an example of a country that decriminalized all drugs, all of them: crystal meth, crack cocaine, cocaine, wow. heroin. Everything was decriminalized for personal use, meaning. If you were found with a shit ton of it in the back of your car, you'd probably go to jail because you're probably a dealer. But if you found if they found you with some that was personal use, you didn't get you didn't get thrown in jail, you didn't get, you know, anything bad, you might get a fine uh, at the worst, or they may they may tell you, hey, instead of getting a fine, you go take this course or whatever. And that's in Portugal. Portugal had in before two thousand and one had one of the highest uh, heroin addiction rates in all of Europe. Their addiction rate uh, was over 1%, and the rest of Europe was at 0.4%. Uh, they had just a terrible drug problem. So their drug policy completely changed. They decriminalized all drugs. So rather than throwing people in jail, they gave them the option t- for treatment and for help, mm-hmm. which I know some people are like, oh, I'm not paying for someone to whatever. Well, you're paying for the motherfucker to go to jail, and the reality is it's actually <laughs> cheaper. Yeah. It's, it's actually cheaper. That's a good point. It's actually cheaper to, to rehab them than house them in a jail. Yeah, yeah. What it are is. you really doing for the individuals? It is. So if you if you if you want to save money, if you're all about saving money, saving tax dollars, it's smarter to take someone and give them the option for treatment rather than throw them in jail where now we're spending money on housing them and feeding them. And then of course you turn them into a criminal. Now they have a felony. Now they can't get a job. And now we're basically going to be spending money on this motherfucker for the rest of our lives because yeah. we put them in the situation it's very hard to come out of. Portugal flipped it on its head, decriminalized. People get treatment options. The addiction rate dropped considerably. Overdose rate dropped considerably. AIDS uh, cases and HIV cases dropped considerably. Crime dropped considerably because the black market became no less violent. Yeah. You know, the, the, so huge success. And it's now 2018. So we've now had, you know, 50, over 15 years where we can look at a country that is in Europe, that's a decent sized population, and say, now, did it what le- happened there? Did it level out, Sal, or is it continuing to show progress? Like, is it is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it staying the same now that it's gotten it's gotten better, and it seems to have continued to get better? But I'm sure at some point, you know, it's going to level out. I don't think it's going to like, you know, fix all the problems. But right, right. They're saving money. Less people are addicted. Less people are overdosing. You know, less crime. Like, I can't think of. Any like what bad came from that? You know, when less people are using it too. By the way, mm-hmm. the drug use rate in Portugal actually went down because I do firmly believe that, especially with kids, there's this whole taboo effect where Bro. something is cool, dude. That's how I, it's illegal. This is how I was with alcohol. I 100 percent know for a fact. I consume more alcohol between the ages of 16 and 21 than I have from 21 to 36. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred yeah. percent, and it's all because of the fact that you're not supposed to, and yeah. it's bad, and it's like, oh my god, and then you just do it in excess like an asshole, right? Same thing's happening with marijuana right now, right? It's not nearly as cool when you're a kid to smoke weed as it was when we were kids because, oh yeah, it was edgy. It was like, oh my god, he's a rebel, he's yeah. bad. It's like it's not a big deal now anymore. It's like, oh, you just smoke yeah. weed, right? Right, and then oh, you smoke weed all the time. You're kind of a loser, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> what you're you're seeing that now, even with young kids, it's yep, crazy. Yep. yep. So uh, if you go to the app store, you can get the Mind Pump Media app where you can download all of our shows and there's a search function on there. If you want to look up a topic, it makes it really easy to look up a topic in our episodes and coming soon, more features. It's a free app. Go to the App Store, sign up for it. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance, 
Check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.